So uh, I'm Jake Mosley. I'm with Silicon Valley Bank. I run our Northern California technology banking practice uh, here. And I'm here with Dudi Matot of Secular. Um, and actually, before we get started and allow Dudi to give a little background on the company, Dudi and I actually had the privilege. Who likes football in this room or soccer in this room? So Dudi and I on Monday night had the privilege of listening to Mike Moritz interview Sir Alex Ferguson. Dudi, how was it? Amazing, and though hard to understand his English. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, so sorry, just quick aside, but getting into secular, why don't you give us a little background about your background and how you identified this problem and what ultimately you did to, to address it. So m my background came out of uh, Checkpoint. I've been many years at uh, Checkpoint from the early beginning uh, of the company, um, mainly in product and R&D. Uh, the whole company and, and the investment done in the investment side, in the customer side, was all around prevention. And, and with, uh, with Checkpoint, we, we built an amazing product, and they're probably still doing that. Uh, the problem is that uh, we recognize probably about uh, over kind of four or five years ago is that uh, the whole attack surface is changing and, and, and perimeter and perimeter prevention uh, can scale. So it's, it's the necessary evil, but relatively easy to bypass. Um, and nowadays it's, it's becoming almost a common knowledge. Um, but back then it was kind of something that uh, people would say, hey, I have semantic, I'm secured which probably today most would love. But that was the kind of uh, the reason we started Secular. Great. And so just quickly then, a, a little bit of background on what Secular does and the problem that you're addressing. Yeah, so, um, so Secular starts with the assumption that the network is breached. Um, what I'm, and then a new whole set of problem is arising, uh, which starts with, okay, so once my network is infected and I have an attacker, what do I do? So first of all, identifying and detecting the attacker inside the network is a hard task. Uh, that's first thing. Second thing, it's mostly manual. So look into what you guys are doing, you're searching. You have tons of people in your SOC operation, your security, go, buying a million dollar tool like Splunk and what, what, what you do is just search. And it takes you a long time and therefore uh, 40, 50, sometimes 200 days to identify, or you call the 100 Ghostbusters, in our case, Mendian, to come and deal with a problem. Can't scale. Uh, the other thing is, you can find the people. I mean, uh, I know that um, there is, in the numbers I know of in the uh, US, there are about 65,000 people working in IT security, but there are 200,000 open positions uh, uh, just in the US for IT security. Uh, the other thing that changed is that uh, security becomes uh, an issue. Back four years ago, the, the security officer was sitting in the basement. Today, he's being called to any board meeting, so he needs a visibility tool to present on the, on the deck. He doesn't have that. He doesn't know what's the risk. He doesn't know what to tell about. What's the KPI? Why do I need more few million dollars to protect? So Secular basically provide a platform uh, all running in the cloud as a service, nothing for the customer to deploy, that basically first easy detect the attacker or fast detecting the attacker uh, at scale, uh, providing the customer with uh, visibility and all being, or most of it is being automated. So trying to address the, all the needs for the problem and, and what customers are looking for. So you, you just touched on this being a cloud-based solution, a subscription software business versus on-premise. Walk us through a little bit around some of the differentiation, or the benefits of leveraging this solution versus on-premise. Yeah, so, so, we, uh, so we built, uh, we took a centralized approach. The approach in security being a silo approach. So I go and buy my appliance, I go and buy my firewall, I go and buy my IDS and put that and stack that uh, in my rec and hope for the best and, and maybe configure that with a policy. Uh, oh, nowadays I'm getting signature or indicator, now they're calling it for my vendor. Um, it may work to some extent, uh, but when you go into the inside security, it's, it's common to um, turn on analytics and do more sophisticated stuff. Uh, 
uh, when, so we took a more kind of advanced approach, instead of building a silo machine and, and you deploy that on each and every customer, we took a centralized approach. Uh, the centralized approach gave us uh, and our customers a lot of benefits. First and foremost, uh, we serve with one machine and customer, meaning that, first of all, we aggregate a lot of data. Uh, second, we as a vendor own a lot of context in this space. So we can apply the aggregated data that is accumulated over time together with our own context coupled with our very sophisticated human beings. So all of these ready vendors will tell, okay, we have the 8200 8, 8, people. But once the product is shipped, the, the, those people are not working for you. Our approach, the centralized approach, that those people actually work for you on your data in a centralized supervised approach, and therefore giving you the best, the best, uh, the best outcome. So it's a combination of aggregated data context that we circulate on in a supervised manner, uh, all as a service and supervised by those smart people, providing them the high fidelity results. And one of the things that you hear, I think, regularly from um, IT departments is just how much they're getting basically spammed by all these false positives and attacks that, that aren't really there. And I think one of the things that you guys specialize in is really detecting 100% what is an accurate threat that's happened. Can you talk a little bit more in detail about what you guys do there? Yeah. Um, so I mentioned that um, once we're getting into, from, we move from the perimeter, which is mostly static, into the inside and, and then applying analytics, um, uh, the false positive ratio probably increase. And that's a, that's a major problem, and especially when you go into detection, it's another problem. Um, so all the benefit that I, I listed before, the centralized approach, the owning of the data, owning of the context, and, and running that in a supervised environment, allow us to provide the customer only with those incidents that we uh, are certain about, or close to certain, that are uh, therefore malicious, and you need to be aware of, and, and you can start and automate. Versus other competition would mostly would be unsupervised, provide you just with indicator. And again, it's another search that they has uh, go and tell you go and hunt for this problem. It, it seems like that could be a fine line to navigate in terms of holding back on identifying kind of all these indicators, as you call them, versus waiting until you have that 100% tack and it potentially being too late. How do you balance that and, and look at that? Yeah, so that, that's, uh, that's a good question. So, so we always uh, get from our customer the, okay, we want more than just the, the high fidelity, also open the umbrella. So the more the sophisticated the customer, the more uh, the customer is uh, sophisticated, the more he wants to get. Uh, so we, we are open to that, and that's on our roadmap to open that and offer our customer, which are more advanced, to get the, uh, a sense into the less... So below the 100. Any questions from the audience just as we get close to wrapping up here? Yep. So we, we have a top, uh, a top 100 uh, blueprint names. Um, I mean, companies like the top IT company in the Valley, the top uh, uh, consulting firm in the US, the top financial, top um, and manufacturer, which you probably ate their food out there, etc. All I, I can mention the name because all of them being breached. And, and, and that's the problem. So even if prevention works to 80%, 90%, there's still this gap. And once the attacker relatively easily bypass, or even he doesn't need even to bypass, because even if he gets access to our corporate credential because our employee did a stupid mistake uh, is, is in uh, and, and therefore uh, how to protect nowadays. Great. Thank you, Duty. You're welcome. Thank you very much.